Good evening. Stay with us tonight, if you will. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. We're going to sing first, second, and fourth verses together. Everyone standing with us tonight. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world. The Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of his love amen you can be seated welcome to our midweek service tonight we are so grateful for you being here uh, during this uh, few days right before Christmas, and uh, we trust that you've had a good day and a warm day, and it's a little chilly, and I think it's going to get even colder in the next few days, but uh, that's okay because today's the first day of winter. It's supposed to be chilly, right? And But it's so good to see each one, and I'm looking forward to spending the evening with you as we look in the Word of God tonight in uh, one of our last Christmas stories of the year. And, uh, and then uh, I want you to pray for our Kids for Truth program and Nursery and Wiggle Worms and, uh, and uh, the teen program as they're all over in the educational building having their uh, classes and, and a Christmas party and so many things going on over there. So remember them tonight as we go to the Lord in prayer. We have several different prayer requests, and I want you to uh, pray for, of course, all of our church family and uh, the those on the back of the bulletin. And, uh, and I'm going to mention several tonight in our prayer requests as normal. But let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God for his blessings. If, you're, if you have a need or a burden or a prayer request, uh, perhaps an unspoken prayer request, you just need the Lord's intervention uh, or need the Lord's guidance or help. Would you raise your hand tonight? Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask him for his blessings tonight. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for allowing us to meet together once again tonight. And we thank, we're so thankful for this Christmas season. And thank you, Father, for those who are able to come tonight. I know it's such a busy season of the year. So many things going on with Christmas parties and family gatherings and so many things. And we're grateful for that. I pray that it would be a Christ-centered Christmas for each one of us in our hearts and our homes. And, Father, I pray that it would be very special spiritually to us. And, Father, I pray that you would be exalted and magnified through our lives, each individual lives. And, Father, in our homes and Father, I pray tonight that also you would bless the ministries of our church. Father, thank you for those that came out and was able to go out and put out Christmas door hangers. And, uh, and Father, probably, uh, probably a couple hundred homes tonight, and we're grateful for that. And Father, I pray that you would allow us to see much fruit from that. And Father, we pray that you would bless again the service tonight. Speak to our hearts through your word and uh, meet with us. Help us help those who have needs tonight physically. And you know who those are. And I pray that you would encourage them and help them, those who are sick. And we'll thank you for what you do in our midst tonight, in the ministries tonight here at Temple Baptist Church. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can remain seated. Brother Holly's going to come and lead us in another song. I want you to sing out unto the Lord tonight. This song paints a beautiful picture of the birth of Jesus Christ. I want you to think about the words. If you can picture in your mind tonight the scene what it was like when Jesus Christ was born. Let's sing together. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, brown young virgin mother and child. Sleep. 
singing out tonight these Christmas songs. Appreciate Brother Holly leading us in these. We have a couple announcements. I want to encourage you and remind you to be faithful uh, to our Sunday morning service. Now, I realize that uh, Christmas is on Sunday this year, but I want to encourage you again to be faithful. 11 o'clock as normal. There'll be no breakfast, no Sunday school classes. Uh, we're just, and the choir's not singing either. We will have congregation singing. We will have special singing. You don't want to miss that, being a part of our church singing out together these Christmas songs. And then we'll have, of course, a message from the Word of God. So the 11 o'clock service, we will not have um, the, the Wiggle Worms Children's Church, Junior Church. We'll have the nursery available. Is that right, Miss Linda? The nursery will be available. Uh, but that's the only thing over there going on on Christmas Day other than our uh, morning service. But uh, I, I, I realize that everybody's not going to be here. I realize that. I understand that. But it's, it's just, you know, that's what Christmas is about, is Christ. And I think what a shame not to worship Him uh, together in the house of God on Christmas morning. And so it'll be a regular service. Uh, so minus, of course, the ministries here. But uh, we're looking forward to it and worshiping the Lord. It'll be a special, sweet service. And uh, I want to encourage you to be a part of that as much as you possibly can, all right? And then also, uh, don't forget about the Christmas mailbox, okay? And we've got, you can see some of them, a lot of the cards have got gone. Thank you for those that picked up cards that have been given cards in there. And, but there's still a bunch of cards over there to be uh, received, okay? And so some of you, uh, somebody told me the other day, they're like, uh, there's some so and so, so and so family. They might have 30 cards in there, and so uh, sometimes you think, well, nobody give me a Christmas card. Well, maybe you do have one over there, so it's worth checking. Okay, and so help us with that, and uh, let's get that cleared out before uh, before the end of the year, which is the last Sunday of the year is the Christmas Day. So let's really get that cleaned out tonight, maybe. Okay, and so help us with that, and um, and then also our 2023 pocket calendars. This is a big deal for us. Each year we have these 2023, or excuse me, we have our, our yearly pocket calendars, and they're really nice. They have our ch church logo on them, and uh, there's some out in the entryway. There's some over here underneath the Christmas cards there on that table beside the media desk, and I want to encourage you to grab that, and, uh, and uh, as you're going about your events of the year, whatever you use that for, uh, remember to pray for the ministries uh, upon the church that God would bless for his power and for his presence and for his blessings upon the church family. And then also, don't forget about the winter ladies meeting. That's coming up before we know it, January 12th. That's a Thursday evening at 7 o'clock over in Heritage Hall. Several ladies have already signed up. Uh, the sign-up sheet is in the entryway. And I want to encourage you ladies, each lady, to be a part of that special time with just the ladies get together. They have a Bible study. It's, it's not long, but it'll be helpful specifically for the ladies um, and we, we may do this, there's some churches that I've heard of and seen do this, and we may actually do it some in time to come here, where we have perhaps all the ladies will meet in here, maybe for a midweek service, and we have a lady speaker to just the ladies, and maybe the, all the men will have a men a speaker for just the men to help, uh, you know, talking about some things that be specifically uh, designated special for the men over in Heritage Hall or vice versa. Fellas, maybe we'll just put the ladies over there, and we'll keep the auditorium. We'll keep the padded pews, all right? And I'm just kidding. But I, I, would think, I thought maybe we could do something like that um, to specify uh, the, the, uh, what the Bible says for uh, our role in the family. Uh, but these ladies, as you know, they are very special for the ladies' meetings. And uh, I don't know, you know, though, okay? Because I've never been to one, but I know they're special. And so sign up for that. And then also treat bags. Um, does, did anybody eat your treat bag completely? Okay, Steve, yours is gone. Go get another one, Steve. You can have another one. We'll only charge you $7 for this bag. And I'm joking, of course. But um, uh, So I'm glad that you received that. 
and I've been stealing my kids' York peppermint patties out of their treat bags, and I love those things. And uh, But anyway, I want to encourage you, if you did not receive one, if you're here tonight by chance and did not receive one on Sunday morning, there's a few left, and, and even if you got one, if you want to go ahead and pick up another one, because the fruit, of course, would just go bad, and we need to go ahead and get rid of those. So there's just a few left there in the entryway. Help yourself, take one to someone else. I'd like for them all to be gone after the service tonight, okay? Let's all stand together once again all over the building. We're going to sing out one more song unto the Lord tonight as Brother Holly Lee. Amen. Just the chorus together, go tell it on the mountain. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Let's do it again. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Let's take a moment now. Move out of your seat. Fellowship one with another tonight. together go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Amen. Let's remain standing. I can't help but to think of the kids' choir uh, this Christmas season as they sung for us. I think it was maybe in the Christmas play, and they sung that song, and they said, Go! Tell it. And I was almost getting ready to ask Brother Holly if we could do that. But uh, I'll refrain a little bit tonight, but uh, maybe next year. But I like that song. And we should tell of the Christmas story, should we not? And, uh, and I don't know a better time to tell somebody about Jesus than this time of year. There's so many people that are hurting. I was, at, uh, I was at a place, I was getting ready to tell you where it was. I was at a restaurant, uh, very local here, and uh, just the other day, and, um, and uh, ordered our food. It was kind of a, dry, it wasn't a drive through but it was a quick deal. And uh, I, I gave the lady that helped me an outreach card, and I could tell it, it on her the face just said a thousand words. I don't want anything to do with that. But she reluctantly took it, and um, and I can't help my heart break for people like that. Unfortunately, sometimes people have bad experiences in life, and they blame God for it. Uh, they see somebody who says, I'm a Christian, and they... Um, they get hurt by that individual. That individual does or says something that uh, they, they sh perhaps should not. Maybe they have a weak moment. And by the way, we need to learn to give people grace. 
We need to learn because you may have a weak moment in your life and you will appreciate when somebody gives you some grace. And I certainly want you to give me some grace as your pastor because I'm far from perfect. I make mistakes more than I care to mention and think of. Uh, but the truth of the matter is you have to give grace to me. I have to give grace to you. And, uh, and we have to give grace to one. We have to forgive one another. And everybody has weak moments. Everybody has, as one pastor put it, everybody has weeds in their field. Nobody's perfect. And we have to, we have to but, but the truth of the matter is we, I give that uh, uh, outreach card to this young lady. And I could see it. She just, she, it, it was almost like she wanted to tear it up in front of me or give it back to me. And my heart breaks for people like that during the season when it's such a joyful season. It's, 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 there's so much potential in the Christian life. The Christian life is not per. I mean, it's, it, 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 Christ is perfect. The Christian life is not without its, it, you know, you, you still have heartaches. We still have issues. We, you know, we still have trials. Uh, but it's worth it, isn't it, to have someone like Christ to go, go with you through those things, to give you peace, to have someone you can talk to, to pray about. And I wouldn't trade it for nothing. And, uh, and I want to encourage you to, to show that, uh, that spirit of Christ through this Christmas season. Let others see Christ in you. Amen? And uh, so, but let's, as uh, you come, if you will, at this time, we're going to receive our offering. Our Wednesday night offering always goes to missions. And uh, I want to thank you uh, for your giving already in, uh, in the uh, missions as well as your tithe and offering. And uh, in really every ministry, the building fund, I know that there's been over 5,000. They've told me, depositors told me there's been over 5,000 given to the building fund, which is going to our carpet. And we're, going, we're painting in the process of painting over in the educational building. The whole building, really almost the whole building, especially the hallway, it's just going to look incredible once it's all done. And if you go over there right now, it's going to look like a mess. But... It's in the process, and we're trying to get that wrapped up as quickly as we can. The carpet, Lord willing, will start on Monday, the day after Christmas. And so we're trying to get all the paint done before the carpet comes in. But just as a quick reminder, uh, let's be faithful to give. If somebody wants to give five or $6,000 to the building fund tonight, that would be wonderful. In January, we'll hit it again uh, in investing for uh, the property as we've been talking about, okay? But uh, I do also want to say thank you to the Abundant Life class. Uh, for the gift that uh, and the card that they uh, presented to my family and I, not presented, but gave to my family and I uh, for Christmas. That was very generous of you and grateful for you. And, and if you're in that class, you know what I'm referring to, and I thank you so very much. All right? God bless you. Let's pray and ask God for his blessings over the missions offering tonight. Father, we love you. Thank you again for the opportunity to give. Thank you, Father, for allowing me to be a part of uh, of a giving church. Thank you for allowing me to to be the pastor of a church that has a heart to give. Uh, Father, I don't have to haggle. I don't have to press and push and prime and try to beg, plead people to give. Father, we certainly remind people and help people understand what the need is and why we give and, and perhaps new people, especially on Sundays, why we give and, and, and how we should do it and how, what it's for. But, Father, I don't have to plead and beg, and I'm thankful for that. And, Father, I pray that you have blessed the gift uh, that, that's given tonight and also the giver. And we'll thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated tonight. you so much. I 
appreciate that instrumental tonight. Take your Bibles, please. Turn with us tonight to the book of Luke in chapter number 2. Luke chapter number 2, again, in your Bibles tonight. And again, I want to thank you so much for being faithful to the house of God tonight. And I realize it's Christmas. It's such a busy season. And I appreciate you carving out the time to be faithful to the house of God tonight. And we're grateful for all of those who are watching online as well who are not able to be with us this evening. Luke chapter number 2, we're going to be reading in verse number 21 tonight. Luke chapter number 2, in verse number 21. I love the Christmas story and every aspect of that. While you're turning, I want to remind you of the order of events that took place in our committed Sunday school class for the last week or two. We, uh, or we took about two Sundays, I think, to complete that. Uh, we went through the order, the chronological order of events that happened uh, with the birth of Christ. It can be a little bit confusing because we have a portion of the Christmas story in the book of Matthew, and we have another portion of the Christmas story that's recorded in the Gospel of Luke. And so you, you kind of have to put those together, and sometimes it can be a little confusing, but the way it happened, let me just share this with you. Um, here's kind of like the timeline of, of actually what took place. First, you have, uh, of course, <clears throat> John the Baptist. That plays into the role. Uh, Elizabeth and Zacharias um, having John the Baptist, uh, or excuse me, being uh, expecting um, uh, with John the Baptist. Of course, that was a miracle from the Lord because Elizabeth was past age. And then we find Gabriel, the angel Gabriel, going to Mary in the little town of Nazareth and telling her that she is going to be expecting uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the next thing that happens really is Mary leaves the little town of Nazareth and she goes down to be with her cousin Elizabeth, who's expecting John the Baptist, because you, you, you kind of have to put yourself in, in, in her shoes. There's probably a couple reasons she did that. The angel of the Lord told her, Gabriel told her, that her cousin Elizabeth was expecting to help her realize that, hey, listen, it was impossible really at this time of Elizabeth's age to have a child. She's past uh, t uh, the age of, of childbearing, but she's also barren. She can't have a child, So, but with God, nothing shall be impossible. And so God, Mary, God did that for your cousin Elizabeth. God is doing this for you. And so maybe Elizabeth, so maybe Mary left Nazareth and went down to her cousin Elizabeth uh, to help uh, for just some, just some um, validation there, just to make sure, reassure in her heart and mind that this is, of course, of the Lord. She already believed that, no doubt, but that would just be another uh, 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 confidence level for her. And also, Elizabeth would be in tune with the Lord and understand that the Lord did a miracle in her life. Uh, so maybe Mary, uh, could, she would, could relate to Mary that God was doing a miracle in her life when perhaps nobody else would believe Mary that she's going to have the Son of God that she was still a virgin, right? Uh, in the little town of Nazareth, a couple hundred people, nobody else would believe that. So, she, so Mary leaves to go down to spend a, couple, a little bit of time with her cousin Elizabeth, who's, who's, getting, uh, who's expecting with John the Baptist. And then, of course, we find in this timeline, Joseph hearing, of course, about um, uh, Mary's expectancy and of course, his Im immediate thoughts are, she's cheated on me, she's done me wrong, she's been unfaithful, so I'm going to put her, we're going to end this uh, engagement. And of course, the angel of the Lord, uh, it doesn't say Gabriel, but an angel of the Lord comes to, her, comes to Joseph and says, Joseph, uh, don't fear not to take Mary uh, as your wife because what's, what she's having is the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we find Joseph and Mary going to Bethlehem for tax purposes. So they're leaving the little town of Nazareth. They're going down to Bethlehem so Joseph can pay his taxes. While they're in Bethlehem, Jesus is born. And then, of course, then we find that the angels announce that to the shepherds there that night in the field. The shepherds come immediately and, uh, and gather around Jesus looking at him. And this is where we're getting to tonight. Uh, the shepherds then 
as we sung tonight, go tell it on the mountain. That's what the shepherds did. They went and spread the news abroad everywhere. And then they went back to their sheep job uh, out in the fields that night. And then we find that after about uh, 40 days, which was a, according to the law, Joseph and Mary, we're going to, by the way, we're going to, when we read this, we're going to learn that Joseph and Mary were very, they were not just good people. They were very godly people. They really followed the law of Moses, which a godly Jewish person in that time would follow strictly to the law of Moses, the Pentateuch, which is the first five books of the Bible, the law that God gave Moses, and he delivered, of course, to the people. They would follow that very strictly, and Joseph and Mary did that, as we'll see tonight. And they took him, at, there, was, there was a time frame, God said, after you, ladies, after the ladies have a child, there's a certain purification time. Uh, for a male, this was 40 days. So after about 40 days, uh, Mary and Joseph took baby Jesus, so he's about 40 days old. They took him uh, to the temple, uh, which is, it's not the same, but an application, we could call it the church today, is where they worship the Lord, they did sacrifices. They took Jesus to the temple and dedicated him to the Lord and made an offering to the Lord, which is what they were supposed to do according to the law. And there, while they were at the temple, they met this man named Simeon. And they also met a lady named Anna. And these were really, you don't hear a whole lot about them. They're really normally not in Christmas, in children's Christmas plays, uh, maybe an adult play. But uh, it, it's a very significant event that took place, especially for Joseph and Mary. And, uh, and, and so we're going to talk about just a few moments about Simeon and just pull out some really practical things about his life and how we can apply that to our lives uh, tonight. Let's begin reading in uh, Luke chapter 2, verse number 21. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus. So he was circumcised eight days old, which was so named of the angel, which he was uh, conceived in the womb. Verse 22, and when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And does everybody, you know, understand we have baby Dedication, right? And that's kind of what we're doing is the dedicating these babies unto the Lord. And we'll try to have another one. We got a lot of babies coming in. Thank the Lord for that. I love, don't ever, don't ever, don't ever hear a baby cry or a child scream. And now, you know, if they're, you know, 13 years old and, you know, <laughs> you know, but if there's a baby screaming and uh, maybe a toddler, listen. Parents, by the way, don't have to. There's some ministries that have to take their children to the, to the uh, wiggle worms or whatever ministry that. We don't have that here. You can kind of do whatever you want. And I think it's good for the little kids to be in the church. I think it's good to have them in, that, in this environment. See, they don't understand what's going on, but they sense the spiritual atmosphere. And that's very important for them. And that's why on Sunday nights, we don't have any kids' ministries. They need to be in here. Amen? And so, uh, but anyway, uh, we have... Um, uh, the the um, children in here on Sunday nights, but we find that I lost my place. I forgot where I was here. Uh, we find that um, they met Mary and Joseph are meeting uh, Simeon here in the temple, and um, notice. Let's begin. Keep reading in verse number twenty-two. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Oh, I know where we are. We were. We were. <laughs> Baby dedication, dedicating them to the Lord, saying, Lord, I'm going to give you this child and raise him up for you. And, of course, we'll try to have another one. Oh, all these babies coming in. <laughs> Took me about two minutes, didn't it? But we got there. Don't ever think, oh, I wish that baby wouldn't scream in the service because uh, sometimes you, you might be in a church and there's no children at all. And so we need to be grateful for all the little ones around here. And God is blessing. I am so encouraged. Uh, verse number 23. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. 
And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Now, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto to marry his mother. Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And when you get home, you can read verse 36, 37, 38 regarding Anna. But we're talking about Simeon tonight, and let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for your word tonight. Use me for a few moments to be a blessing to our church family. Open our hearts and our eyes and our minds uh, to these truths tonight and help us to apply and implement these things into our lives. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, uh, Mary has had baby Jesus. Joseph and Mary uh, are now together and they are trying to fulfill the Old Testament law after the, her purification, again, about 40 days, the court of law of Moses, they take baby Jesus at 40 days old and take him into the temple to dedicate him to the Lord, also to offer a sacrifice, which is according to the law. Uh, you ever Raise your hand if you've ever heard why uh, that Jesus grew up in kind of a, a poorly home. It wasn't a rich, uh, large home. It was probably a poor setting. Mary and Joseph probably didn't have a lot of money. Raise your hand. Have you ever heard that? And this is one of the reasons why, because they offered up turtle doves. They offered up these, 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 uh, these uh, birds because they did not perhaps have the finances to offer perhaps a lamb or something like that. And you could pur purchase these, uh, these birds a little bit cheaper, of course. And so uh, a, a little bit of a lower income type of setting. It was a humble birth and a humble childhood that Jesus had. And so when they brought in Joseph and Mary, if you can picture yourself as, uh, as a fly on the wall here, Joseph and Mary, I could see Mary uh, cuddling uh, Jesus there in her arms, cradling him, him in her arms, and they're taking him into the temple. They're dedicating him to the Lord. They're offering these, uh, p these, these birds unto the Lord as a sacrifice uh, because of this man-child that he, they have, God has blessed them with. And then after this, they meet this man named Simeon. And Simeon was greatly used of God, as we'll see tonight, to bring a, encouragement to Mary and Joseph. And uh, you know, when a when a when a uh, when a husband and wife have a child, you need to be an encouragement to them because they they have just gone through a life change. You know it. And uh, and so Simeon, perhaps Mary and Joseph didn't. Perhaps everybody was thinking, well. Yeah, she had that out of wedlock, and you know, and and you know how it goes, you know, and and uh, and Joseph's trying to be a help to her, and but he's he should have put her away, and you know, the gossip of the town is Joseph and Mary, because everybody didn't believe it, right? No doubt, and so, but Simeon did, and Simeon would have been this older gentleman would have been such an encouragement to them. It would also have been a validation for them, uh, a, a confirmation that this was of the Lord, uh, that Jesus, this baby was truly the Son of God, and also a preparation in their hearts and minds for what was ahead. So I want us to notice a couple things tonight. First, I want us to notice Simeon's purity. Look back with me in verse 25, again noticing some things about this older man who met Mary and Joseph in the temple, his purity. In verse 25, mark it, it says that uh, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout. We find the same wording that Joseph was also a just man. It means they did right in the sight of the Lord. Their heart was pure and right with God. Uh, they weren't harboring sin in their life. Simeon was a good man and his heart was right with God. He was trying to do what right. He was trying to, as Job was, eschewing evil. He was trying to keep all sin out of his life and, 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 and running from the appearance of evil, keeping his heart clean and pure before the Lord. That's what that means in verse 25. He was more than just a good man. He was right with the Lord. And may I encourage you and I to have a life of purity. Amen? I want to encourage you to, and I know it's Wednesday night crowd, 
but may I encourage you to have a life that is pure and right with God. Don't, may we not try to compare ourselves and say, well, I'm better than so-and-so. We like to do that, don't we? We like to think, I'm better than that person. I'm better than my sister-in-law. I'm better than my brother-in-law. I'm better than my uncle. My uncle doesn't do anything. I'm better than he is. Can't wait to see him this Christmas season, you know, so I can look at how good I have it because he's horrible, you know. You know, that type of thing. We love to compare ourselves. But may we compare ourselves only to Jesus Christ and to make sure that we are keeping our life pure uh, in our hearts right with the Lord. May we consistently have a pure life and heart right with the Lord. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 22 says, Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. Keep thyself pure. Paul is telling Timothy, keep thyself pure. In other words, it's not the pastor's responsibility to keep you pure. Uh, it's not your spouse's responsibility to keep your heart pure. They're there to help you, but ultimately... It is my responsibility to keep my heart right with God. Amen. Uh, notice another thing. What Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse number 8. Jesus said, blessed are the what? Pure, anybody know where we're going? Pure in heart. Bless. Uh, listen, and you can have a blessed life if you will keep your heart pure. There's something about, and, and of course we understand the scripture behind this, but the truth of the matter is there's so much, it, 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 as a child of God, if you allow sin in your life, if we harbor sin or bitterness, jealousy, whatever it may be in our life, it is the most miserable life that you can possibly live if you're a child of God and you're living in opposition to what God the Holy Spirit wants you to live. I've got, used to have a little, when I preached in junior church, I had this illustration and I bought a birdcage. And um, I've got another, I mean, we need to do that here. Matter, I have preached it here. The, raise your hand if you remember the birdcage. Like five years ago. Brother Mike, you remember that? Miss Sandy, you remember that? Miss Sandy, you remember that? Okay, some of you are here. And I had, we had the birdcage and uh, we put a white dove in there. The white dove symbolized the Holy Spirit. And uh, you remember the white dove that landed upon Jesus after his baptism as the Holy Spirit? And uh, the, uh, the white dove symbolized the Holy Spirit. The cage, the bird cage, symbolized our body as the temple of the Holy Spirit. We had the bird cage in there, which is the Holy Spirit. And then we put all these kind of bad stuff in there. You know, we put bad stuff in there. And, and that symbolized when we put, allow bad things in our mind, allowing our minds to wonder, putting wrong things in our life and, and so forth. And the Holy Spirit of God, well, he doesn't like that, does he? But then we put some, we took that stuff out and the Holy Spirit of God can have full range in there. He, and, and he can, he, he's in there regardless if you're saved, but he's a whole lot, there's so much peace in there when you get the sin out of your lives. One of the most miserable, one of the most miserable lives we can live is a child of God that is allowing sin to dominate their life. Because there's not going to be true joy and happiness in there because the Holy is disagreeing with the Holy Spirit of God and Scripture. There's going to be a constant conviction of knowing in your heart. You know, you know, you're living, oh yeah, I'm having a fun time. But you know deep down you're not where you're supposed to be. And so God says, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. First Peter 1.22, seeing ye have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. With a pure heart. Oh, we are to love one another with a pure heart fervently. So Simon, Simeon's uh, purity, Simeon's purity. I was, I was I, I'm getting uh, some, um, um, I, I picked on my wife earlier today. She was doing the sermon outline and I, I saw her doing it. And, uh, and I, she looked, she told me, she said, do you like this picture, Simeon? And I said, I said, well, sweetheart, I said, it's Simeon, not Simon. And I was joking on her. She had it perfect, Simeon. And uh, I was joking on her, made her think it was, she had Simon on there. And she's like, you, you know, she, and uh, she had some bad words for me. No, I'm just kidding. She, <laughs> she, <laughs> she didn't. I'm just kidding. And, uh, but uh, it's coming back on me because I just said Simon there. Simeon's purity. Simeon had a pure heart before the Lord. Notice the second thing quickly about Simeon. Not only 
And I'll probably say it again, so if I say Simon, you know who I'm talking about. Simeon, I'm working second shift right now. (laughs) Simeon's purity. And then secondly, Simeon's patience. Look in verse 25 again. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. Waiting for the consolation of Israel. You know what Simeon, you know who he was waiting for? He was waiting for the Messiah. He was waiting for Jesus to come back. He was looking in the Old Testament prophecies that there's one day going to come a king. He was looking at maybe Isaiah chapter 9 as we have it today and saying one day, one day we're going to have a king and he's going to set up on the throne of David and he's going to rule and reign and Israel will be a world power once again and and we're looking forward to that. And, And Simeon was looking for that. He was waiting patiently for the consolation of Israel. He had a lot of hope for his country. And his country was in a mess. His country was not where it should be. It was under Roman government and under Roman rule at this time. Of course, it's Jesus' life. And uh, in Simeon's life, and it was under Roman government. And, and Israel wasn't the world power that it once was. It would fall in because of judgment of God as a result of their own sin. But Simeon was saying, one day the Messiah is going to come. One day. And he was looking for it, waiting patiently for the coming of the Lord. And of course, that was baby Jesus, the Messiah that did come. But can I say by way of application that like Simeon, may you and I look forward and patiently wait for the coming of Jesus. Jesus is coming again, isn't he? And we talk about that from time to time. But the Lord is coming back and the next thing on God's calendar is the rapture of the church and Jesus is going to stop in the clouds and call those of us who are referred to as the church, the body of believers, and call us up to be with the Lord and we're going to forever be with the Lord. I'm looking forward to that. May we patiently wait for it. It could happen any moment. It surely could. And may we live like it could be tonight. Number three, Simeon's perception. In verse number 25, Look at the last phrase, and I want you to underscore it and look at it. The last phrase of verse number 25 said, And the Holy Ghost was upon him. In verse 26, it says, And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So again, I want us to notice Simeon's Simeon's perception and the fact that uh, the Holy Ghost was upon him. Now, something that we need to understand And that is in the Old Testament, we find phrases such as this, the Holy Ghost came upon him. Uh, Samson comes to mind immediately. Uh, You remember when when Samson was in a bind, the Holy Spirit of God would come upon him and he would have a major incredible strength. And we find that so many different people in the Old Testament time, the Holy Spirit, we find that phrase in some type of wording, the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit, or the Spirit of God would come upon them. It would enable them, empower them to do something above and beyond themselves. And so the Holy Spirit of God would come and go in the Old Testament time, in that dispensation of time, the Holy Spirit of God would come and, and go upon individuals as the Lord would use them and help them in different times. Now today, in the church age, we need to understand that the, the uh, Christians, those of us who are believers, are indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God. So we, 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 we can apply that. It's the same Holy Spirit of God. It's just how God works through different, uh, different, eight different uh, dispensations, really, of, of different uh, years and times. And how he, uh, dispensation of time is how he deals with a certain group of people in a certain different way. And we know again today through the church age, we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God. But we can say this about Simeon that because the Holy Spirit of God was upon him, uh, the Holy Spirit of God was able to lead him and reveal things unto him, such as the fact that he would not die until he seen Jesus. And so the Holy Spirit of God, again, was upon him, and it revealed to him, it was, he was led of the Holy Spirit to understand 
that he was not going to die till he seen Jesus. So here's the application for you and I. The Holy Spirit of God in, in, in this dispensation, in the church age, you and I today, the Holy Spirit does not come and go in your life. We are sealed. The, if, if, the book of Ephesians, we find we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. Raise your hand if you know what a sealing jar, a canning jar is. Uh, somebody gave us some uh, wonderful apple pie filling in a sealed jar. Oh, praise the Lord. And, uh, you know, I don't want to wait for the crust. I want to eat that stuff right with a spoon. I'm just seeing it on the counter. I'm like, let me open that. You know, it's, 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 it looks so good. And then there was another jar and um, uh, it looked like some type of jam. And I was, I was opening that one. Okay. I just couldn't help it. And, uh, you know, <laughs> my diet, you say, Pastor, how that, how's, the, how's that diet coming now? <laughs> it's out the window. And uh, I was opening that jar. And my wife said, wait a minute, you, you open that and you, you know, something to the fact that, you know, you better wait to open that to some effect. Because if you, if you break that seal, uh, you're going to have to use that refrigerator or something, some of the other. I don't know what she said, but I close it back. <laughs> men, you always listen to your wife. That's sermon number three here tonight, okay? And I uh, got an amen from there, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, w I, I didn't open the seal. And, oh, I know what it was. I opened the, opened the little... Uh, the screw thing over, <laughs> over the top of it, but I didn't un unseal it. I didn't pop that thing off, and, off that little mason jar, or whatever it was. And so I and, and I said, oh, I said I didn't know I, I shouldn't open it right now. I said if I screw it back on, is it going to be okay? She said, yeah, because it's still sealed, sealed. And that reminds us what the Holy Spirit of God. He we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. We're in there, and God's in control of that. You see, and so we cannot get away from the Holy Spirit, he dwell and dwells within us. But just like Simeon was, had the Holy Ghost upon him, we have the Holy Spirit of God within us. And just like Simeon was revealed uh, some information by the Holy Spirit of God, can I encourage you and I to be led of the Holy Spirit of God. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 says this, I say then walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And may, one of the most important things that a Christian can do is walk in the Spirit. In other words, yield yourself, your flesh, and your mind, and your body, your tongue, your thoughts, your ears, every aspect of our bodies, yielding ourselves to the Holy Spirit of God. He dwells within us, and everything that, you know, listen, it's as simple as this. If I'm doing something that I know, I, 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 I'm getting ready to do something, I know I should not do. The Holy Spirit of God is going to give me a total. If I'm submitting to him, I'm going to have a total uneasiness about what I'm getting ready to do or say. And it's the Holy Spirit of God convicting me saying, Josh Bowles, you better not do that. You're a child of God. And he don't say that in my ear, but I know it. It's a steel. Best way to say it, describe it, is what happened to Elijah. It's a steel, small voice. And you know it, don't you, as a child of God. You know, what you're getting ready to type out, you, fit, you know it. And you have a choice right there whether you're going to walk in the flesh or walk in the Spirit. And the Bible says walk in the Spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Why? Because the flesh <laughs> gets you in trouble. Every time. I was listening to a song by Andrew and Mary Beth Jones while I was painting the other day. And, uh, and uh, I, I'm so looking forward to them being back with us in January. And he's... And, uh, uh, but Andrew was singing a song about uh, this person that has been with him and he can't get rid of him. And he always, this person that he's referring to is always with him and always gives him advice about what to do. But he always gets him in trouble. And he said, I'm tired of him. And he said, you know who it is? It's myself, the old man. And uh, maybe they'll sing it for us in January during arrival, but... The old man always gets you in trouble. That's why we would walk in the Spirit. Do what God, the Holy Spirit of God, would have you to do. And uh, as the Holy Spirit of God, he teaches us, he guides us, he leads us according to the Word of God. Um, notice the fourth thing, Simeon's place. Simeon's place. Look in verse 27. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. 
He came by the Spirit into the temple. And I want you to notice that the Holy Spirit of God led Simeon into the temple. Those who are led of the Holy Spirit of God, you, every believer that is saved are going to have the, the Holy Spirit of God indwelling within them. But that doesn't mean that they are being led of the Holy Spirit and they're allowing God, the Holy Spirit of God, to rule and reign and have control of their lives. And, but when Simeon did, uh, was submitting himself to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God led him not to McDonald's. That's where the flesh will lead you. He didn't lead him to Walmart. That's where your wife will lead you. He, he led him to where? Where did he lead him? Applica the temple. The application, the house of God. We call the church house the house of God. It's the place where we worship God. We offer our, 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 uh, our giving, our monies, uh, as a sacrifice unto the Lord. And uh, we worship the Lord. We serve the Lord through his house. And um, uh, have you ever heard, I won't stay on this too long, but have you ever heard this, this phrase, I don't need church to worship the Lord? You ever heard that phrase? I hear it all the time. I don't need church to worship the Lord. I worship the Lord from my house. I worship the Lord in my own way. No, you cannot worship the Lord outside the house of God. Now, if, now, if you are providentially hindered, if you are hindered physically or in some way, obviously God understands that, right? You, obviously God has you there for a certain time. God has allowed things to happen. Obviously, it, some people are shut in. I'm not talking about that. But people who just had, that, had this mindset of, I don't need the church, I don't want the church, that is totally against Scripture. Uh, when we are guided and led by the Holy Spirit of God, we, the Holy Spirit of God will lead us to the house of God. Now, I want you to notice not only he, the Holy Spirit led Simeon into the temple, but I want you to notice also that Simeon met Jesus in the temple. In other words, when he did what God led him to do, when he did what he was supposed to do, when he was led of the Holy Spirit, he got a blessing. He got, a, he got to meet Jesus. And I believe, of course, that Simeon died not too long after this, as the Lord told him. And so, but he got to see Jesus. It was, it was a, just a point, just a, the climax of his life. And can I just say briefly before we move on quickly that uh, Simeon, got the blessing when he went into the temple and that's where the blessings are for God's people uh, is in through the house of God. Psalms chapter 84 verse 4 says, blessed are they. Anytime the word of God says blessed, my ears perk up because I want to know how to be blessed. I don't know about you, but I want the blessings of God. I mean, I want your blessings, but I'd much rather have the blessings of the Lord. And so anytime the Bible says, blessed are they who, I want to say, okay, tell me how to be blessed. It says, blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Who just plant, root in the house of God. And uh, because it's, it goes on and says, they will still, uh, they will be still praising the Selah. The, mods, the words uh, Selah, think on what you just read. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee. Notice quickly, number five, Simeon's praise. In verse number 28, we find that they then took he him up in his arms and blessed God. So Joseph and Mary just had Jesus. He's about 40 days old. They've taken him into the temple uh, to sacrifice according to the law of Moses to dedicate baby Jesus unto the Lord. And uh, they meet this older gentleman named Simeon. Maybe he's walking on a cane. He's a godly man. He, he has a pure heart before God. He's patiently waiting for the Messiah, for Jesus to come. The Holy Spirit of God is upon him. And therefore, the Holy Spirit of God has revealed to him this, this thing that he is going to be able to see Jesus before he leaves this world. And then he finds himself, as the Holy Spirit led him, into the temple. He gets a blessing. He gets to see Jesus. And then he takes baby Jesus in his arms. Mary, I can see her handing Simeon over as Simeon reaches out to grab baby Jesus and cradle Jesus in his arms. And he looks upon his face, his Savior, and your Savior and mine, and he blessed the Lord. May our life, and I'm just going to say this and we're going to move on, may our life be full of praising and blessing the Lord. We've got so much to be grateful for. <laughs> and we've, we, we complain so much. 
Can I encourage you to praise the Lord and bless the Lord? He's been so good to us. Don't forget about the blessings of the Lord. Don't Listen, if you're living in a home that has heat, don't forget to thank God for that. I don't know how cold it is outside, but it's chilly enough where I put on a jacket. It's chilly. And, and the truth of the matter is, uh, may God help us to be thankful. Listen, if you drove here in a car, I didn't see any mopeds pulling up out there. If you rode a moped, you can have my coat. God bless you. I know it's going to be cold out there. If you rode, if you walked, I don't know, I didn't see anybody walking, but if you're walking, man, somebody, somebody is going to give you a ride, surely. But the truth of the matter is, if you pulled up in a car, which I think everybody did tonight, you got, so much, you got something to be thankful for. We got so much to be grateful for and thankful for. Notice not only that, but sixth Simeon's peace, verse number twenty-nine. Lord, he says this. Now let us thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Simeon had peace and was ready to go. When, right after he met Jesus. And real peace in our heart truly comes through a relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you don't know Jesus, you've heard the phrase before, if you don't know Jesus, you don't know true peace. And there's truth about that. Number seven, and lastly, I want you to notice Simeon's proclamation. This is what he looked at, and this is what he proclaimed. He proclaimed first regarding the Gentiles. In verse number 32, he says this, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. That's you and I. We are not Jew. Most of us are not. I don't know any Jewish people in our church. If you are, wonderful. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, we are, most of us are Gentiles because we're not Jews. We are Gentiles. And he is proclaiming this prophecy uh, that also Jesus was going to die for you and I, for the whole world. Amen. Not just for the nation of Israel, but he's opened that up to the Gentiles, to you and I. For God so loved who? The world. Simeon not only proclaimed the, regarding the Gentiles, but Simeon also proclaimed regarding Jesus' reception and also his rejection. It goes on in verse 4, 34, he says, Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child referring to Jesus. This child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against. You know, a lot of people in Jesus' day did not believe him. They rejected him, hence his crucifixion. And a lot of different religious people, remember those, the religious group in Jesus' day, they were the ones who were pushing, he was being, uh, uh, speaking blasphemy against God, saying he was the son of God. They did not believe him. It was the fall of many. But it was the rise of many who were fishermen, like James and Peter and John, who trusted in the Messiah, who trusted in Jesus Christ. And it was for their benefit, of course. So Simeon proclaimed not only to, regarding the Gentiles, his reception and rejection of many, but also he proclaimed something concerning the cross. In verse 35, Yea, he looks at Mary. I can see Simeon holding baby Jesus and looking at Mary. Yea, he says to her, A sword shall pierce through thine own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. What do you think that meant? It was the cross. Don't you know that G Mary, of course, was there when Jesus was crucified? We don't know exactly what happened to Joseph. Some say he, we, we believe he died because he was not there at the time of the crucifixion uh, to comfort Mary, and Jesus called upon uh, John to take care of Mary, his mother. And so perhaps Joseph had passed away during Jesus' uh, childhood or early adulthood, somewhere along the way, perhaps, because he was a good man and, and, and he wouldn't have run off or nothing like that. So perhaps he, ran, he, he passed away. And so Mary was there when she, he was born, and Mary watched him on the cross and all that he went through for her sins and for the sins of the whole world. And no doubt that would be a sore piercing in her heart, figuratively, of course, because to watch her son go through that. But knowing that God used her, 
as a vessel uh, to bring the Son of God to mankind. Let's review these and we'll be done tonight. You've listened so well. Christmas time. There's so many things we can remember about Christmas time, but let's not forget about Simeon, how he was used of the Lord. And when I think about Simeon, I'm encouraged and I'm uh, I- exhorted and I'm, 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 pro- I'm po- poked in by the Holy Spirit of God to live a pure life, a life that is without sin, a life that is patiently waiting for the coming of the Lord and living my life every day like Jesus could come back any moment. And I want, to, I want him, I want my life not to be looked on by people and say, well, he's successful and, well, he's, he's got this and he's got that and he does this and he's popular, but how does Jesus view my life? And then also Simeon's perception, he was the Holy Spirit of God was upon him. Oh, we have the Holy Spirit of God if we're saved. If you're saved tonight, would you say amen? You have the Holy Spirit of God dwelling within you. Let's yield ourselves to Him. Don't walk in the flesh this Christmas season. Walk in the Spirit. Amen. And in His place, the Holy Spirit led Him to the place of the temple. May we be in our place every time that we can. Then Simeon's praise. Simeon blessed the Lord. May we, oh, we've got so much to praise the Lord for. Simeon's peace. Peace came when he saw Jesus. He was at peace. And that's how we find peace today is through the cross of Jesus Christ. And then also what he proclaimed. May God help us to find and implement these simple truths into our lives today, tonight in this Christmas season. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes tonight. Musicians are going to come and we're going to give a brief invitation. If you're here tonight and do not know Jesus as your personal Savior tonight, it'll be a wonderful night to get saved. If you're here tonight and you have a need, whatever that may be. Perhaps the Holy Spirit of God has is, is poked around, prodded around in your heart tonight and you need to respond by talking to the Lord tonight through the invitation, would you come? Let's all stand together with heads bowed and eyes are closed. If you have a need tonight, if you need to be saved, would you come? Let us talk to you about trusting Christ as your Savior. If you have a need tonight, whatever that may be, would you come? Place that upon the altar as they play tonight. Father, we love you tonight. Help us to implement these truths. Help us to be like Simeon in every aspect of life. Help us this Christmas season to be spirit-filled, to remember the true reason of the season. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. We're going to go over some prayer requests that I want to remind you of, some folks to be praying for. Uh, Let's continue to pray for all of our shut-ins during this time. I know that our church has done a couple things. I know the teens have uh, gone to all of our shut-ins with a gift packet uh, several weeks ago. And then I know the Ladies Missionary Prayer Fellowship did the stockings to all of our shut-ins. And by the way, I appreciate all that they do for uh, so many so many people help uh, in their encouragement to all of our shut-ins. I appreciate that so very much. And um, But let's pray for them during this season. And then also, let's pray for our missionaries, many uh, you know, cannot be with their families during this Christmas season. So let's, let's spend a moment and, and put ourselves in our missionary shoes and pray for them during this Christmas season. And then also, let's continue to pray for our country. America needs the Lord. And let's continue to pray for our country. Let's also pray for Israel. Let's pray for our services on Sunday. I'm looking forward to a great day. And uh, let's, uh, let's be faithful in our place and pray and ask God for His blessings upon our service. And many people, I want to mention uh, several of them. Let's pray for Wanda Michaels, uh, Randy Smith, Ryan Marlowe. Last I heard, making some major progress there. Sterling Kettner's wife, let's continue to pray for her. Uh, Nancy Collier, as she continues to recover from the open heart surgery. How's she doing, Miss Sandy? My 
Okay, there you go. Great. Good, praise the Lord. Okay, good report. Okay. Amen. Sure, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. So let's continue to pray for Nancy and good report there. And then also uh, Ruby Kane, let's remember to pray for her. Uh, Savannah James, let's continue to pray for uh, Savannah and of course Jalen and Hannah. And then also let's pray for uh, Miss Patricia Miller, Lawrence Miller. Let's pray for Bunny Manning's grandson, uh, Alex, also Kinston Adams with some health issues going on in his life. Melanie Williamson, continue to pray for her with cancer treatments as she continues to go through there. Uh, Olivia Morton, uh, do continue to pray for her grandmother with cancer. Also, let's continue to pray for Charles Petit. Charles, let me give you an update on Charles. He was at the hospital for several days, of course, and uh, with the flu and also uh, with some, some complications with his cancer just really all over his body. And they have recently moved him, I think either today or yesterday, to the Novant Health Rehabilitation Center. Uh, there, I think it's the one right there. I think there's just one. Isn't that right, Straff? Uh, excuse me, Joe. There's just one, isn't there? The one on Strafford right there. And uh, so let's continue to pray for Charles. He'll be there, I think, for 10 to 14 days, he said. And so let's continue to pray for him during this time. I'm sure he would love to have a visit from some of you. Uh, also, and I know, know some of you visit him, and I'm thankful for that. Let's continue to pray for Greg Weatherman's sister with cancer. Uh, Norm Castillo, let's continue to pray for him with his uh, heart situation. And then also Barbara Falls with a, a broken pelvic bone. Let's continue to pray for her with that. Gary Bartley, this is some friends of Neil and Janice. We're praying for them. And then Miss Betty Potts. Miss Betty Potts, I got to speak to her yesterday evening and on the phone. And Miss Betty is at home and she's, uh, she's making some progress. We're grateful for that. Continue to pray for her as she recovers from her pacemaker surgery. Does anybody have any outspoken prayer requests? And we'll start on this side. Miss Donna? Okay, let's pray for Elisa. This is Miss Donna Manuel's granddaughter. Miss Linda? Hey, let's, yeah, man. Good. 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 Praise the Lord. All right. Glad to hear that good report. Anybody else? Okay, Miss Allie. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Miss Allie, for mentioning that. I should have mentioned him a while ago. Frank has been sick, and, and uh, I know that some, many of you have been praying for him. Continue to pray for him, if you will, please, uh, with his sickness. And we've got several that are sick. And uh, so let's pray for those as well. I, don't, I normally don't mention it. There's always something like flu, strep throat, all these different things. I usually don't mention somebody's sick because they're just always people that are, have sicknesses. And, uh, but, uh, but yes, pray for Frank and remember him. Anybody else over here? Okay. Okay. okay, let's pray for Zora May being sick. Anybody else? Okay, Miss Kelly. Okay, so let's pray. Okay, so let's pray for Ryan Marlowe with some kidney stone issues that that would get resolved. Anybody else? Okay. All right. If you have an unspoken prayer request, would you raise your hand tonight? Let's go, Lord, in prayer and ask God for his blessings tonight. And uh, you don't have to come, but let's pray together that God would help us and help our church family. And uh, during this Christmas season, and let's pray for the ministries and the services here on Sunday as well. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. Thank you again so much for this 
wonderful, wonderful season that we have to celebrate uh, Jesus' birth. Thank you, Father, for sending your Son to die for my sins. Thank you for dying for the whole world, Jesus. And thank you for being buried and raising again. Thank you, Father, for salvation so free, plenteous. Thank you for the benefits of that. Thank you for the things that, as the Bible says, accompany salvation. Thank you for all that it comes with, the joy and the peace. It's not always just, just perfect. Father, life is, has its issues because of sin, but yet we're grateful we have a Heavenly Father who cares and loves us and intercedes for us. Father, we love you, and I pray tonight that you would help many of our church family. Father, right now I pray that you would help them physically, emotionally, and mentally, spiritually, those who are watching online. And Father, I know there's so many, their, their hearts here tonight, they would love to be here, but they're unable. And I pray that you would encourage them tonight, help them, help those who, Father, have gone recently through uh, procedures and been in the hospital. I pray that you'd help them with their recovery process. And I pray that you'd help all of our church family, those who are sick, there's so many. I pray that you'd help them physically. I pray that you'd restore them to health. Father, and help them to get back to their feet like they would like to be. I pray that you'd help our missionaries across the world right now, especially those who are not able to be with their family. I pray that you'd bless them, give them a wonderful Christmas time together. And I pray, Father, that you bless and help, uh, Father, our country to turn back to you. Father, help America, help our government leaders to, to make godly decisions for our country. Help us as American citizens that are Christians to stand up for what's right. Father, help us to implement these truths that we've heard tonight from your word, from Simeon. We love you. Give us a great rest of the week, and we'll thank you for what you do. Bless our services on Sunday powerfully for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand together, and I'm so grateful that you came tonight. And uh, uh, let's go home and eat a lot of Christmas cookies and uh, just spoil yourself. You need to do that and uh, this season of the year, all right? I love you. You're the best. God bless you. Turn around, shake a few hands. You're dismissed tonight.